if I could have your attention for a second. I hope you're enjoying the brunch and there is more. So if you feel like you need to go over, please do that. Um, we are gonna start the program at this point, but please continue to enjoy your meal. And I did want to introduce some special guests that we have from our central office here today. I'm just um, very blessed that they, they would come out and support this. But we have Mr. Jim Estes, who's school board uh, chairperson. You wanna stand up and, yep. Yeah. We have Mr. Jeff Jordan, who is, he said he's not standing up. And then we also have Ms. Tammy Sharp, a school board member. We appreciate her being here. At this point, I'm handing it over to Coach Mack and Coach Wartman to talk about the uh, Hall of Fame and to begin the ceremony. This is an exciting day. Uh, it's a big day for all of us here at Blackman High School. And I'm going to turn that microphone down just a hair. Hold on. <laughs> See if that helps a little bit. All right. An exciting day and an exciting time for all of us at Blackman, especially those of us who are involved in athletics. This has been a dream of many of us at BHS for years. In the beginning, we wondered if it might ever happen or if we would ever be successful enough to celebrate our athletic programs. And now the school is celebrating its 20th anniversary, and it seemed like the appropriate time to put into place this Athletic Hall of Fame. You can look around and see much of the success that has happened at Blackman over the past 20 years. We definitely have some success and athletes to celebrate. The Athletic Leadership Committee began putting these plans together about two or three years ago and when we began the process, it seemed like November 2019 was so far away. But now here we are, and we're celebrating not only these athletes, but also the hard work of the committee. The members of the committee, uh, the uh, leadership, athletic leadership committee, and the selection committee are really excited about this day. And at this time, I would like to ask the members of the athletic leadership committee to please stand. And if you would remain standing, remain standing, and then the members of the selection committee that were a part of this uh, Hall of Fame selection party. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the vision of our Hall of Fame was to be an athletic Hall of Fame and not sports specific. Uh, thus, a, uh, thus a criteria that could evaluate and honor athletes across all of our sports programs and that was sort of our goal uh, to, to make sure that it was uh, across all sports programs. Uh, the Blackman High School Hall of Fame Committee's goal was to honor the elite of our student athletes. Uh, our, criteria, our criteria highly, um, uh, obviously highly valued on field, on court um, success as well as, as well as sportsmanship, citizenship, and contributions to our community and our, our, our Blackman High School community is our community as well. So those are the, the highlights of what we look for from our criteria. Now uh, you can go online and uh, access our nomination forms as well as our criteria. We also have left some at the table to get more in depth of our criteria. But I think our criteria really fits the needs um, and, uh, of our student athletes and trying to value our, our most uh, gifted uh, student athletes and what they brought uh, today and obviously moving forward. So we're excited about uh, a criteria that we feel like can have staying power uh, uh, long after the initial committee has left. And thank you. At this time, I'd like to bring to the podium uh, Miss Debbie Price. I'm looking to see, you. there she is, I'm sorry. Ms. Debbie Price, the mother David Price. First off, I'd really like 
to thank Blackman High School for honoring these, these athletes in this first Hall of Fame. Um, David spent, of course, all of his four years of high school here at Blackman. He was part of that freshman class that came in. It's hard to believe the school's been open now for 20 years. But he thoroughly enjoyed his years here in, um, at Blackman High School. And um, he set a lot, of, a lot of records. I don't know if they still stand or not while he was here at Blackman, but he, um, he loved sports, absolutely loved sports. And one of my favorite stories, I think, when he was here at Blackman was when he, um, during his sophomore year, uh, the District 7 AAA um, adopted a different district schedule so that um, teams played each other on back-to-back -back nights. Uh, before they did this, district teams maybe were scheduled all throughout the year, and a pitcher who was dominant, such as David was in high school, he pitched every district game. And I think uh, rival coaches didn't appreciate that, that very much. <laughs> so they decided um, that they were going to um, pitch, you know, they were going to play back-to-back -back nights so that one pitcher couldn't pitch in all of them. And uh, the change became known as the David Price rule. So <laughs> um, while he was here at Blackman, he pitched all four years, and uh, during um, his freshman year, when he pitched against Red Bank in Chattanooga, he struck out the first nine batters. Uh, that kind of set the tone for what his um, high school years were, were going to be about. And then during his senior year, uh, while playing against Cookville, he struck out 21 in nine innings. Um, I don't know if these, you know, records are still around here at Blackman or not, but uh, he. He had a very good career here. His overall career, he ended up with a .43 ERA with 151 strikeouts. And he was the Rutherford County Male Athlete of the Year in 2002, 03, and 04. So he, um, he accomplished a lot um, in baseball and basketball. And of course, it was on that basketball court that he and Nathan became such good friends. Um, but you know, with all, even with all of that that he's accomplished, you know, his father and I are most proud of what he's done in the community. And um, and for his family and friends. Not sure why I'm crying. But, <laughs> um, you know, he has a deep love for his family, um, a genuine desire to help his teammates and friends any way that he can, and he has a, a strong commitment to the community that was his home during his youth. So um, that's what he's all about. Thank you. To be inducted into the first Hall of Fame class at Blackman and to be the first freshman to senior class at Blackman starting in 2000, that was, um, for me at the time, you know, going from middle school to high school, like most kids, is probably a little bit scary. But uh, to go to a brand new school where I think our senior class was, pretty sure it was under 50 students, um, and to watch you know, how Blackman grew the four years that I was there, whether it was the baseball team, the basketball team, or the football team. You know, all the sports teams really took off the four years that I was, um, that I was a part of, of Blackman High School. You know, I remember my, uh, my eighth grade year, whenever I was at Rockvale, you know, um, we came out and, and visited with Coach Green, the baseball coach, or who was gonna be the baseball coach at Blackman. We all met in the parking lot right outside of the gym and uh, we walked over to where the baseball field is now 
And at the time, it was just a, a field of nothing. And he explained to us that it was, you know, it was going to be the baseball field. And then my freshman year, I remember going out there and picking up rocks out of the infield. Um, we painted the outfield fence. You know, it was really a work in progress. And to, to now see the facilities that Blackman Baseball has, just the, the field that they have, you know, it's, um, it's very, very nice, especially for a high school level. So to, um, to be a part of this first class and to, again, to be a part of it with Nathan, one of my best friends, is, uh, is extremely special for me. You know, it's something that I'm gonna be able to, uh, to cherish and hold on to for the rest of my life. I am extremely grateful to be a part of this. Again, I'm sorry that my family and I could not be there. We have um, other things going on this weekend. But again, thank you all very much. I am uh, I'm honored to be a part of this. You know, Blackman was a very special four years of my life. And it was uh, like most of, of everybody else, you know, high school was a very cool time for me. It was, you know, I entered whenever I was 15 years old and I left whenever I was 18. And it, it put me on the, the right path to attend Vanderbilt and to uh, to do the stuff that I've I've been a part of and I've been able to do over the past 15 years now. You know, it's uh, it's crazy to say that I was in high school 15 years ago, but um, but time flies. Again, thank you very much for for having myself and my family and, and all of our friends out. You know, we really appreciate it. Go Blaze. have uh, Bonnie and Debbie uh, Price come up please and just accept this memento for the Hall of Fame our induction for David. This time I'd like to uh, invite Coach Kevin Meadows to come to the podium uh, for an induction for Octavius Mathers. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate all of today's inaugural inductees. Uh, this is a very significant uh, moment in the history of Blackman High School and something to be very proud of. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, friends and family of Itavius Mathers. I cannot begin to tell you what an honor for me it is to stand before you and speak about the 2019 inductee, Itavius Mathers. Itavius was a 2012 graduate of Blackman High School, but I was introduced to him years earlier as a talented running back on our freshman team. The assistant coach at the time in charge of calling the freshman offensive plays came to me and asked uh, for some advice on play calling. I gave him one tip. I said, tell your quarterback to turn and hand it to Mathers. The kid, <laughs> the kid is special. And he did. And that was the introduction that most of us had to Itavius. After splitting time as a sophomore with some, very, uh, some other very talented backs, he took control of the position as a junior. <clears throat> his junior year was fun to watch. Uh, his first game, of, the first game of the season, we traveled to Tallahoma. First play from scrimmage, sweep left, 80 yards, touchdown. Um, the first of many. The whole state at that point was put on notice. Opposing defenses that year knew exactly who they had to stop but couldn't. Teams knew that he could score at any time from anywhere on the field. Just ask Franklin High School, who in the 2010 playoffs had us pinned deep at our own eight yard line in the south end of the Inferno. One play, 144 Ben Power, and 92 yards later, Itavius proved that he was by far the best player on the field. That 2010 season was incredible. Four games over 200 yards, two games over 300, in total 2,614 yards and 29 touchdowns. Itavius finished his junior season the most decorated football player to ever walk these halls. The Tennesseans Player of the Year, District and County MVP, Gatorade Player of the Year for the State of Tennessee, the Old Spice Player of the Year for the State of Tennessee, Super Prep 
all-region player and Class 3A Mr. Football finalist. I still find it absurd that he did not win Mr. Football as a junior. <laughs> Hytavius followed up his remarkable junior campaign with a stellar senior season. Multiple 200-yard games, three 300-yard games, one of which was the opening round of the 2011 playoffs against a very good Knoxville Farragut team. Hytavius put the team on his back, carried the ball 26 times for 349 yards and five touchdowns. Octavius finished his senior season with 2,253 yards and 27 scores. And following his senior season, he was awarded the Class 3A Mr. Football. He finished his career at Blackman holding basically all records, 583 career carries, 5,569 yards, 62 touchdowns, and so many sports center top 10 type moments that we really don't have time to go through. However, I don't want this to be all about his achievements on the field. No matter how great he was on the field, he is even a better person. A wonderful student, as I'm sure all his former teachers would attest to. Everyone that knows Octavius knows how res reserved and humble he is, doing anything for you, helping you out in any way possible, and all the time with a great smile on his face. I was delighted personally to see his interest in becoming a high school football coach. His contagious personality and unequaled work ethic can now be passed down to the players that he coaches. He will no doubt be a very inspiring mentor for these young men. In closing, Itavius is still the standard by which all running backs at this school are measured, not only on the field, but in life and how they conduct themselves in the community. I'm very proud to have been a part of this man's journey and truly look forward to seeing what the future holds for him. I present to you 2019 Blackman High School Athletic Hall of Fame inductee, Itavius Mathers. First off, I would like to say uh, thank you to everyone. It's an honor to be inducted into the Hall of Fame with the rest of the nominees. I would like to thank God for giving me the ability to play the game I love and to play it uh, for so long. I started playing the game when I was five years old and I stopped playing at the age of 23. That's a great career and one that I would cherish for years to come. Then I'd like to thank my family for all the support and pushing me to become a great player, but a better man. I would like to thank my dad for introducing me to football. I remember when you bought me my first pair of cleats. I remember when you, co <laughs> when you was coaching me all the way up to middle school and all the workouts you put me through. There's so much more that I'm leaving out, but I would like to say thank you, dude. Let's see. I would like to thank my mom for allowing my brother D and I to move to Muppetsboro to the Blackman area. I know it was tough letting two out of three of your kids who were very close to one another move away, but I thank you. And I think it was worth it in the end. And thanks for being selfless. Uh, I would also like to thank my granny for letting us move in with you. Thanks for taking us to church every Sunday and letting us gain our faith in the Lord. I will never forget how you wouldn't let me and Dee leave the street. You finally let us leave the front yard after three years that we moved in with you. <laughs> <laughs> That being said, I want to give a big thank you to my younger brother, D. I call you the unsung hero in this story. You motivated me to be a better leader by example and to do the right things. He's not here. Uh, he's in El Paso, but you are my younger brother, but 
to me, you felt like an older brother. No offense to you, Red. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I just think it's special because you helped me with my homework and made sure I passed so I could focus on the game. You would show me that it wasn't just about me because if I did something great, it was more of a we did it. You never asked for anything in return from the high school to college to professional. The only thing you wanted me to do was just play the game that I love and in your words you would say, Bro, I just want you to go out and ball while I'm in the stands. So it may say Octavius Mathers, but deep in my heart, it's the Mathers brothers who's getting inducted. Uh, next, I would like to thank my QB, Tyler Strickland. Thank you, thank you for tutoring me in math and teaching me how to study. <laughs> <laughs> I took those lessons with me all the way up until I graduated. Then I would like to say thank you to Coach Pickard, who was the middle school coach, Coach Lee. Uh, thank you, Coach Meadows, Coach Mack, Coach Shash, and the rest of the coaches who played a part in the coaching of my career. And I want to thank, thank my offensive line. Once again, none of this would be possible with the, without you all uh, leading the way for me. Thanks to all my teachers who taught me and always told me that I would be something one day if football worked out or if it didn't. I'll tell a quick story. I grew up playing football in my backyard or in the dirt or in the park. And sometimes we would play in the pavement. I just loved the game so much I didn't care why I played nor what type of condition it was outside. I think the pavement was better it taught you how to be tough and run the ball and catch it, even though you're going to get hit into the mailbox. Uh, I'll never forget uh, playing football outside with my older brother Red and his friends. And it was pouring down, raining sideways. And uh, we're all going to the park to play. But it's big old puddles out there. Uh, next thing you know, I see my mom outside with the belt uh, yelling for us to get in. And then lastly, I grew up idolizing these great college and NFL players, Cadillac Williams, Ronnie Brown, Terrell Davis, Marshall Falk, and my favorite, LaDainian Thompson, AKA LT. I never said I wanted to be like them. I always told myself I wanted to be better than them. I would find myself looking at their highlights, trying to steal their moves and add it to my arsenal. Once some of them got in, inducted into the Hall of Fame, I was watching and I told myself that it would be nice if once my career over is over uh, that I can get inducted into the Hall of Fame. And uh, now I'm here doing it. So with that saying, being said, I would like to say thank you to everyone again and go Blaze. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Coach Mary Dayton, a former uh, volleyball coach here at Blackman, now at Stewart's Creek, to come and do the introductions for Lindsey Sisko. Hello, everybody. Well, in 2000, we opened the school. You know, many freshmen, a few sophomores, and very little juniors and seniors. It was a challenge, but Everyone here was up for the challenge. And uh, at the time we had our first team, we had 18 freshmen, two sophomores, three juniors. And you know, we're, we knew at that the point we played a varsity schedule, we were gonna be a, a really good looking JV team playing a lot of varsity teams. So <laughs> we were up for the challenge of playing, um, getting beat up a little bit and having our first couple of years being, it is what it is. You know, just kind of learn and just find the best parts of it as we go and just find the successes in little things. So I had a very young, very tall, very athletic, very competitive. And it wasn't just competitive with other players, other teams, they were competitive internally. They always pushed each other to be a little bit better than each other. And it, but it wasn't in, 
in a negative way, it was pushing them to be, as a team, what we needed to be. So by the time we got to our junior, our senior years, Lindsay was one of those 18 freshmen, um, we started to see the confidence show up, the experience paid off, playing, you know, playing those teams that after a couple of years, we were like, hey, we can compete too. And 56 and six, our junior year, her third year, our junior year, and then we got to state runner up, who knew? you know, at that time that we were going to be state runner up and uh, we just enjoyed the ride. And that next year, her senior year, we made state runner up again. So it was a, it was a great experience. Now, every single position graduated that year. So that it was an interesting next year where we only won five games, but who cares? Who cares? <laughs> so, it, it was one of those things where you just take it for what it was. We enjoyed it, enjoyed it so much. And, um, the game changer at that point was Lindsay. She was, she had high expectations of herself. She had high expectations of her teammates. She had an incredible work ethic and uh, she led by example when we practiced and when we were on the court in the game. She was gritty and I loved it. Uh, I loved how gritty she could be. And the team was like her too. That I, I remember one time a player passed it to Cherie and she was apologizing for her, her past looking so bad. And uh, Cherie just looked at her and said, oh no, you just made me look good. You know, it, it wasn't, <laughs> thank you. You know, and she was, uh, it was exciting to see the, uh, the players just move from one place to another. And um, she was a great defender. You would never think a middle hitter would play such good defense. And that was, that was her. And her hitting skills was just out of this world. I remember, I, I don't know if you remember, but there was a player from another team. We went to a tournament. She came up to you after the game and she said, you are one of the best middles I've ever played against. And I was like, yeah, she's pretty good. And uh, she was a, a quick hitter, everything. And just, it just was pretty. It was a pretty time to see her play. So by the time she was a senior, she, uh, she finished her senior season, 1,700 kills to this record. I don't know if it's still standing. It might be close, but um, I haven't seen that kind of record be set yet in my years of coaching. So that's impressive. And especially her senior year, um, 691 kills, 129 blocks, 461 digs. Very impressive. So the, the, the thing that, that I see out of the years that I've been coaching, that's hard to get. That's hard to reach. And her teammates helped her. She was out there leading everything, and it was just nice to see. And, and I'm glad she got awarded the things that she did, state runner-up. Uh, even though we were state runner-up, she was awarded the MVP and uh, Gatorade Play of the Year later on, too. So that was, that was so nice to see. Um, Lindsay is one of the best all-around players that I have had the experience of coaching. She made it easy for me. You know, the, the, the couple years that we had where we were doing the training from freshmen, sophomore years, by the time they were juniors and seniors, I could just kind of sit back and be like, they look good. They, they are working hard and they look good. And it was fun to see them even move on into developing plays and things like that. So it was, it was great to see. That team and Lindsay being the, the, the leader of that team, they set Blackman on the map. And Blackman Volleyball is one of those teams that, you know, you want to be. I'm at another school, but I still, I still have a lot of fond memories here and it's, it's enjoyable to see the success and, and this is this is so neat to see too. So I would like to present Lindsay Cisco as one of the inaugural members of Blackman Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you. It is an honor to be one of the first nominated into Blackman's Hall of Fame and also to be the first woman. <laughs> I just have a few people I'd like to thank that's contributed to my success here at Blackman. Mary, my coach, I do owe a lot of my success to you. You taught me how to play the game and how to be a smart player. Thank you for pushing me to be my best and believing in my potential. I'd also like to thank my parents Thank you for getting me to all those practices and late night games. But most importantly, thank you for letting me pursue my passion in volleyball. I had a few options of sports that I could play, but um, when I decided to pursue just volleyball, you stood by that and supported me in that decision. 
And finally, I'd like to thank my teammates. Volleyball is a team sport, and I wouldn't be standing here today without them. Thank you, guys. It's a very humbling honor and privilege to stand before you today to uh, give the induction speech for Nathan Stevens. <clears throat> live like Nate. We all wore red wristbands to remind us to live like Nate, to live a life like the one that filled every minute with an opportunity to do something special, to do something unique and most importantly, to do something for someone else. Nathan Stevens was one of the fortunate few in 2000 to have a unique chance in a very unique place. Nathan's abilities as a freshman basketball player caused a coach at his former school to meet with Nathan, I think as many as three times, and try to get him to keep from transferring to Blackman. But Nathan saw an opportunity for something special and he took it and he never looked back. This desire for adventure, and possibility gave Nathan more experience in 22 years than most would have in 100. No one can say that he didn't maximize his abilities in basketball at Blackman. He would stay in the gym after practice and shoot threes for as long as Coach Lawless could take it, rebounding and giving him more shots, and then he'd get him to do it all over again tomorrow. His shooting skills, defense, and leadership on and off the court helped Blackman basketball to a district tournament championship and a trip to the sectional playoffs his senior year. Those, show, those shooting skills contributed to some of the biggest wins in that young team's history. That same leadership, along with that bright smile and warm heart, were what compelled his classmates to name him Most Outstanding Senior Boy 2003. At UT, Nathan was a part of the basketball program as a manager under Buzz Peterson and Bruce Pearl. He spent a couple of summers as a manager with the Tennessee Titans, where he earned the trust of players like Kevin Mawai, who had him take snaps from him when he needed a little extra work. And then defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz asked Nathan to chart plays for him during a preseason game with the uh, Denver Broncos. Once school started back, Nathan saw another opportunity coming his way, and he began combining all of his experiences with the Tennessee basketball team and with the Titans and decided to begin working on a career as a coach. Nathan felt it was a calling, and he knew that he could be the kind of coach that would help boys become young men. and his individual players become a successful team. I recently learned that Nathan had kept a journal of sorts of many coaching points, many calls, and many plays he'd picked up from not only the coaches at Tennessee, from other coaches throughout the SEC. This calling, this purpose in life, this passion for adventure is something that was evident in Nathan from the first time I met him. While there were a lot of funny moments and crazy stories that we told over and over again, I most enjoyed hearing Nathan talk about his purpose and his passion. This passion is what has made Nathan a Hall of Famer. Nathan was passionate about being the best. Whether on the court, in the classroom, with friends or family, Nathan always wanted to make the most of every relationship and every friendship. The National Football Hall of Fame says their members demonstrate commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and excellence. Each of these virtues can be found in Nathan. Nathan has set the standard for future generations of Blackman Hall of Famers to reach. There may be some who will equal Nathan in these areas, but there may never be one that can surpass him. Of the current inductees who do Nathan, and for those who will learn more about him upon their induction, I think they will all agree that he has set the bar high, and they are looking to his example for at least a portion of improvement in their life. When those of us who knew and loved him saw the way he pushed himself to be the best and continually took, took up opportunities to help others as a son, a brother, a friend, a youth league coach, a referee, a manager, a mentor, an inspiration, it makes us all really look at who we are and maybe try a little harder to live like Nate. Good afternoon, everybody. David Price. Sorry, um, my wife, my little son, and uh, our newborn daughter couldn't be there 
to enjoy this with everybody else, but um, it doesn't take away how special it is for myself and my family and for the Stevens as well. Um, as we all know, Nathan and I were very close friends and uh, I'll never forget the day that he passed away. That was, um, you know, that, uh, that hit me really hard, it shook me and I know that was a very tough day for uh, the Stevens family as well. You know, Miss, uh, Miss Deanne, Mr. Henry and Lauren were um, always people that always looked after me. They, um, they treated me well. Uh, they raised Nathan extremely well, and that was um, one of the things that I always admired about Nathan, you know, the way that he treated everybody. Um, he treated everybody the same. You know, he didn't, um, he never met a stranger. You know, he was easy to talk to, and uh, just the way that he made everybody around him feel was, uh, was what made Nathan so special. And I remember always saying after he passed away, you know, if I was fortunate enough to, um, to have a son myself, you know, and we have a, a two-year-old son now in Xavier that um, I wanted him to be able to grow up and exemplify the, uh, the traits that Nathan did. You know, just um, the son that Nathan was, the brother, the friend, and, um, and the person that Nathan was just is, is what made him so special. Um, and to be a part of this with Nathan in the first Hall of Fame class at Blackman is, is very special to me and is something um, that I'll be able to uh, cherish for the rest of my life. You know, Nathan is, um, he goes through my mind, you know, every, uh, every single day. You know, every time I look at the clock and I see his numbers or, or whatever it is in our group text back home with all our buddies, just, um, you know, Nathan, Tyler, and, and Terry are, are always talked about. Um, we still love them. We think about them all the time. And um, you know, I'd like to call it, you know, Miss, Miss Stevens and Mr. Stevens. And if Lauren is there, she can come up as well. Thank you. It's my distinct honor and privilege to present for induction into the Black, Blackman Athletic Hall of Fame in its inaugural class, Nathan Stevens. Anytime I ever want to tell somebody about Nathan, they end up telling me. So um, I, I appreciate uh, the committee and the school recognizing me. And um, it's, um, it, it's a special day for us. Our, um, we have family from uh, five different states here today. And uh, so uh, we appreciate the significance of this. Uh, the um, so, uh, stepping back, I um, feel very blessed to live in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I've always told people I think it's the best place in the world uh, to, to work and to raise a family, go to school, learn about God. The, um, now, as we've grown, I'm, I'm quitting telling the story, you know. <laughs> but. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's, it's a wonderful place. Our Blackman years uh, are, well, are, are the best years of our life. Not that there's not great years ahead of us, but um, it was a very special time. And, it's, um, and then thinking about today's event uh, has brought a lot of smiles um, and, and a lot of great memories back. But the, the, the school, um, uh, the, uh, the, school, the school started with a great staff and, and uh, the uh, first principal, I, I don't have notes, what? Dr. Nixon recruited, recruited a wonderful staff, okay? And, and then um, and, uh, we, we still have staff here from the original hires, which is amazing after 20 years. And then uh, Mrs. Vick continued, and, and um, she's here today, and, and that's special. And then um, uh, 
whenever Mrs. Fick retired, uh, I thought, well, uh, uh, I, I heard they had hired a principal by the name of uh, Dr. Justice. And I thought, Dr. Justice didn't know Nathan. I wonder how, how things will go going forward. And it's, uh, we appreciate your support, the continuation of the scholarship support. And uh, we appreciate that we still feel like we're part of Blackman and, and everybody makes us feel that way. And the, um, so, um, and Lawrence wouldn't tell me that I need to move on. So, <laughs> the, uh, so with, with that said, but it, it's amazing. Uh, uh, I went with Nathan to register at Blackman and, um, uh, and, uh, and I was hoping I'd see Mrs. DeBall today and she, she's here. All right. So, you may not remember, but I remember that you registered Nathan, and uh, and she's the assistant principal. And I, 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 I go home, and Dean says, "How the registration go?" And I said, it "Went really great." I said, "We we had a chance to meet the assistant principal," and she said, uh, and, "And as she was registering him and asking him questions, she says, what's your interest? What sports do you play?'" And she said. Uh, he says, well, I like basketball. He says, you play guard or, he said, well, I'm kind of a one, two, sometimes a three kind of guy. And, and uh, she says, well, can you go left with the basketball? Everybody can go right. <laughs> but, if, it, but, but if you can't go left, you need to work on it. And, and, he, and, uh, and, and, she said, and he said, I will, you, you know? And then, um, and, and Nathan, um, uh, he had more talent than anybody else in our family, but he, he was, um, but he had, he had to work hard to be competitive in, in, um, in, uh, Scott stayed with him 20 or 30 minutes after every game and, um, and, you know, and it was just a precious time period. There was a lot of energy in, in the new school. And it was just a, a great experience. And then it continued on through with Lauren. And, um, and so we feel blessed, we feel thankful, and we thank you for the day. Okay. As we wrap up our, our morning, uh, I want to say thank you for coming today. It's been a wonderful day, more than we could have ever hoped for. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it as much as we have. Uh, I, I appreciate those who traveled great distances. Um, we at school appreciate that, and I know your families do as well, so thank you for, for doing that. Today it has been our honor and privilege to recognize excellence and this excellence has been displayed in a variety of ways by David, Itavius, Lindsay, and Nathan. Um, now we get to remind others of that excellence, and we look forward to that. Um, before you leave, I, I would ask that uh, if you would not mind filling out a, a little contact card. There were several at the front. We'd love to stay in touch. And if you feel of others who you would like to nominate to be considered for our future Hall of Fame, we would ask that you take the time to complete a nomination form. There are some at the desk or there are some online at our website. Uh, the selection committee would appreciate having those, those members that you feel worthy uh, of recognition. So thank you for coming. You've had a great day. We are dismissed.